The conflict with Ukraine and the United States and Russia is has gotten pretty bad. Of course, obviously, it, it looks like the stage is set for World War III. But China just yesterday finally got involved. And of course, and they didn't really get involved. Actually, I shouldn't say that because that's the media inaccuracy. So actually, what I just said was inaccurate. So I'm going to correct myself because I'm about to criticize people who do. So I'm going to criticize myself and say that was wrong. China didn't get involved. China really made a statement to the U.S. And I mean, I've I've read what they you know what they said. But again, this the big quote here and the the real big concentration. Of what they're saying is. The United States is unwilling to see its presence in any part of the world being weakened, but the fact is its resources are limited, and it will be su to some extent hard to sustain its influence in external affairs. Now, they did talk briefly about Russia and Ukraine, but they're invested in both, and so China understands the tension, but what they're really talking about is the U.S. needs to stay out of it, right? Civil wars are going to be fought. We had a civil war in the U.S. We worked it out, okay? Civil wars happen, and they work out, right? Now... I'm going to talk briefly about, um, I think, the, the first one. There's a lot of slides here. If you're a Texan, by the way, I have a special slide section, and it's going to be, I'm going to try to hit it at the four-minute mark, okay? So skip to the four-minute mark if you're a Texan and you don't want to see this other stuff. All right, so is Russia moving in the right direction? Some good stuff Russia is doing, as you can see here from the Wall Street Journal. It's now opening even more up to Chinese investors, probably foreign investors. They're keeping interest rates high, which discourages debt, encourages savings and investments. Good if they keep that up. Um, Russia is opening significantly to foreign trade. That's good if they keep that up. Russia's market is significantly underpriced considering its natural resources. Very good. Re Russia is probably the wealthiest country as far as natural resources. So all of these are good if they keep it up. The questions, though, for Russia that I have, of course, still, and the only thing that concerns me, the reason why I'm not super bullish on Russia, I am bullish on Russia, but I'm not super bullish, is are they going to adopt the entrepreneurial mindset? The smartest people I've ever talked to in the world, or some of the smartest people, are Russian. I've interviewed Russians. They are out of this world smart. They can solve problems like crazy. But I always wonder, then why is it that they haven't adopted this entrepreneurial mindset? If you're a young Russian man or woman, look, you can solve problems, okay? That's, that's all. Like, I, I identify a problem and then solve it. Okay, that's, that's where success comes from. And think about problems that other people face and how to solve those problems. That's where the idea of business ideas and wealth come from. It increases the wealth of you and everyone else, right? It's kind of like what Dell did with computers or Bill Gates did with Microsoft, okay? And then will Russia adopt the feudal pro-leader mentality, okay? Again, what I just said to the Russian young men and women, you are the solution. You don't need leaders. You are the solution, right? That's the key. You can solve a problem. You don't need leaders to solve problems, right? Leaders should, in theory, make it easier for you to solve problems. That's what good leaders do, okay? Americans are the new poor in my opinion, from a worldwide perspective. Now, I'm a proud American, but the fact is I, I realize the writing's on the wall, okay? And this is purely self-inflicted. Who, who are the big two presidential candidates in the 2016 election? Hillary Clinton, really, and Jeb Bush, really. I mean, the same darn people that we've voted for before. These, they are no different than past candidates, but yet they're the two that are being taken seriously. I was a kid when Ross Perot ran for president. What did Ross Perot warn about? Trade, growing national debt. Is he crazy? I'm going to have to skip this really fast, but the fact is, Pro was right. I was right as a kid. He was a good candidate. He wasn't Republican and Democrat, but people didn't vote for him. That was their choice. Americans escape in entertainment instead of looking at reality and what was happening in reality. Ask an American who won the Super Bowl or what happened in the latest episode of the Big Bang Theory. Then ask them, name one of your senators. <laughs> well, I guarantee you more of them will be able to answer these two questions than this one. Then ask them this. What is the value of the USD index? I think it's 94. I think. Maybe 94, 95. They've supported and defended US imperialism across the world. Let the world choose what's right for them and do what's right for us. Right? Let's stop butting our nose where it doesn't belong. Our, four, our founding fathers in the US said, stay out of the affairs of other nations. Trade and that's it. And if you are non-American watching this, I want you to know there are Americans who hate imperialism. I know you hate it. We hate it too. We really want our military to come back home. And no matter how much noise we make, nobody will share this on social media. Nobody will care. You know, you'll have all these Americans downvote the video because they can't stand it. But the fact is, is that there are many of us who are tired of this. And then we're not isolating Russia. Actually, what's happening is we're making them more independent of us because imperialism doesn't work. Okay, Texans. 
All right, so Texans are hardworking. We're pragmatic. We're also very proud Americans. People can say Texas wants to secede from the Union. Really? Is that why when you come to Texas, you see more American flags in Texas than you see anywhere in the United States? In fact, I, I, I was recently traveling through, like, I think seven states. There are more American flags in Texas than there were combined in all those states when I was traveling through them. Yeah, Texans aren't proud Americans. I think Texans are very proud Americans. But there are proud Texans too, right? And this reason is Texans get along with America. We like America because it's like us, right? America fought the, you know, our, uh, for our independence, 1776, right? Then we fought the War of 1812 against the British again. Well, Texas, we had, uh, what was it? Uh, the, of course, the Texas independent, the Alamo, uh, Goliad, not good. Then Mexico tried again. It wasn't like we could defeat Santa Ana and push them away. No, then they tried again, right? So Texans identify with Americans. We've had to fight a couple of wars for our independence. Right? And by the way, remember, in the Mexican-American War, we conquered all of Mexico, and we still returned it back to them. Because Texans just wanted to be free. We didn't want more land. Anyway, so I'm going to go back to this slide that I, I showed in a different video, and that was Governor Walker. It's like headed off to the United Kingdom to work on increasing trade and investment. Now, the brain of most people in the media is like this A.J. Delgado person who's a Harvard Law graduate. What the heck does this have to do with your state? Stop campaigning like Christie and do your job. Well, when I first saw this, I, I kind of thought similar to what she's saying. I was like, wait, is, is he really gearing up to run for president? I mean, he's probably, who knows. But I decided, okay, let me look at Wisconsin's trade and investment. Well, blam, as you can see, United Kingdom, 24% increase, almost 25%. Hmm, that's huge, right? That's, that's almost, not quite, but it's almost a billion dollars. It's quite a bit of money. All right, let's just think about this for a second. So why is this a big deal? Well, let's look at the British pound U.S. dollar. The U.S. dollar is getting stronger against the pound, right? Now, I'm not hating on the pound, okay? I'm not anti-British. Not at all. I like the British, okay? But the fact is the dollar is getting stronger, yet Wisconsin increased their exports to the United Kingdom. They increased their exports while their currency is getting stronger? Wow, that's impressive. By the way, if you're from Wisconsin, very good job. Impressive. Well, the, Walker knows this is going to lead to more jobs, more opportunities, and here's the best part. It's good for people in the UK, right? Because trade enriches both nations. So what do you think Walker's doing by going to the United Kingdom? Well, when I look at these numbers, he's putting a face to that, right? You go to the businesses you trade with, and they're like, wow, we met the governor of Wisconsin. He came to our business. That's cool. I mean, I think it's cool. Granted, I don't watch things like the Super Bowl, so, you know, it's... But it'd be cool to actually, if I was, you know, again, in the United Kingdom, meeting like a, one of the political leaders. And it's like, wow, he actually came to our business. And it's like, hey, yeah, we trade with you and yada, yada. I mean, it's great. You put a face to what's going on, right? You're building relationships. You're increasing trade and investment. This makes perfect sense. Whether he's running for president, I don't know. But I can tell you, I know what he's thinking about from a Wisconsin perspective. Okay, let's go back to Texas. All right. So if Walker goes overseas and works with other countries, there's no reason why, like Greg Abbott, our senators, or our House of Representatives can't do the same thing, right? Why can't we go to those countries, or why can't we invite foreign leaders from China, Russia, India, Brazil, Germany, UK, bring them to Texas, right? Now, they may not want to come to Texas, and that's true. They may not, right? We do, the, the one thing Texas has working for it, and I mean probably one of the only things, is we're very friendly. But that's not always what people like. So the thing is, is we can travel to them. But putting a face to that trade and working with other nations, the reason why is if the U.S. continues to burn bridges with every other country, and people will misquote what I'm about to say, but if the U.S. continues to burn bridges with every other country, what Americans don't realize is that's going to cost them jobs in the future. And Texas doesn't want to see our jobs decline just because America's making bad decisions, right? We're not seceding from the Union. No Texan wants to secede. Well, a few Texans do, but there's always crazy people everywhere. No Texan wants to secede from the Union. Texas wants to be a part of America. That's why we fly the American flag with pride. We are Americans. We are also Texans. But we do want good opportunity for us and our children and our children's children, right? And we also know that by trading with people like China or Germany, that it enriches them too, right? We're not trading. It's like Michael Dell. Michael Dell doesn't invent, you know, cheaper computers because it's just good for him, right? Trade increases everybody's wealth. So I am, of course, asking to get in touch with political leaders, the governor, senators, House of Representatives, to trade with these other nations, 
to ask them to come. Yes, President Xi of of uh, China, I, I'm not, may not, it's XI, and I think it's Xi, but I could be wrong, is probably not going to be coming to Texas. They'll probably send someone else, or if we go there, probably it's not. It's not that important, I agree. Or Win Jaibao, again, probably not saying his name right either. They're probably not going to be the ones that come to Texas, or when we go there, are going to be the ones that visit it with us. But there's no reason why we can't look at the businesses, let's say, in China that we work with and go meet those leaders, because it does put a face to that. And they're like, whoa, this is Greg Abbott's here in China at our you know, at our business, and it's cool. We're meeting, you know, the Texas governor. That's my point. We put a face to that relationship. And we also show the world, look, we are proud Americans, yes, but we don't want to be butting our nose where it doesn't belong. And we mind our own business. And that's an important thing to say because I think sometimes the world thinks that every Texan is an imperialist. I'm sorry, every American is an imperialist, and a lot of Americans aren't. And it's kind of unfair to the Americans who aren't imperialists. It's like, why are we getting the bad name because these other imperialistic idiots? It's kind of like conservatives. I, I used to joke around. People were telling, uh, they were asking, what's a neocon? Because it used to be just conservatives. And I was like, a neocon is basically an imperialistic conservative. And they've just, they've hijacked all conservatives. Just like uh, these liberals who are afraid of free speech nowadays have hijacked what liberals used to be, which they stood for a lot of freedom. So... Work with the politicians, work with the political leaders, okay, in Texas to build relationships with these countries because it will cost us jobs if we do not build bridges. And trade is good. Trade is very, very good. And we should not be cheating and weakening our currency to, that just makes our trading partners mad. That's a cheating policy. Let's trade. Notice Wisconsin, they're playing by the rules. That is, especially when everybody's engaging in currency wars, and you can read the review for the book that I read. This is awesome. Again, Wisconsin should be applauded. Impressive. The dollar got stronger and they still were able to increase exports to the United Kingdom. Awesome job. Anyway, contact the, your leaders in Texas and let's work with these other foreign leaders and let's stop getting involved in other nations. Let's mind our own business.